Ark of the Covenant is described in the Book of Exodus as a golden chest containing the tablets of stone on which the Ten Commandments were inscribed. It was kept at the Temple of Solomon in Jerusalem until 587 BC when it disappeared. But where did it go? The hunt for the Ark of the Covenant is probably one of the greatest treasure hunts of, of, of all time. The Ark of the Covenant really is the ultimate treasure quest, and people are still fascinated with that. Where are we going to find it? I think the Ark of the Covenant is still there in Ethiopia. The Ark had three basic uses. One, it's where you kept the Word of God. Two, it's where God lives. So as you go into battle, it's quite intimidating to be taking God with you. Three, to quote the, the great line in Indiana Jones, it's a telephone to God. If this Ark was ever actually seen and could be proved to be the Ark of the Covenant, this would be the biggest archaeological find ever. It's highly probable that the Ark of the Covenant could still be around somewhere if only its hiding place could be found. <laughs> The Ark of the Covenant is a golden chest described in the Bible as containing the tablets of stone on which the Ten Commandments were inscribed, as well as Aaron's rod, a jar of manna, and the first Torah scroll. Moses was given very specific instructions by God on how to build it, as he and the Israelites were camped at the foot of Mount Sinai. It was to be made of shittim wood, plated entirely with gold, with a solid golden lid bearing two cherubim, which were to be placed on top, and then two wooden poles were used to carry it. For me, one of the, the biggest stories about the Ark of the Covenant is how specific the instructions are that Moses was given by God, not only for the tab tabernacle of where the Ark was going to sit, but for the Ark itself. So the Bible is just full of allegory and archetypes, broad sweeping stories. But here's one that has really specific dimensions. The instructions that God gave Moses are particularly detailed, both in dimension and in shape. And they go down to the, the very nearest centimeter, so that following those instructions, as we have them in the Bible, it would be possible to reconstruct a copy of the Ark, which would be indistinguishable from the original. There's a very good description of it in the Bible. It tells you the size is 150 by 80 by 80. It's covered in gold. Uh, it's got four loops on the bottom with poles that are also covered in gold going through it and some cherubs on the top. So we've got a good description of what it looks like. Now, from an archaeological point of view, it's the greatest treasure we could ever, ever find. It was a functional object. The idea was he'd come down from Mount Sinai with these, these tablets with the, the laws, the Ten Commandments on them, and they needed to carry them around. What do you do when you want to carry something around? You make a box. So he has the box to put the things in and put in air and stuff, and they carry it with them. Very, very sensible. So I'm quite certain that the story of the Ark of the Covenant does have meaning. The question is, was it really the magical object that they claim it was? and has it survived to the present day? When Solomon's temple was built in Jerusalem around 800 BC, a special inner room named the Holy of Holies was constructed to house the Ark and the Ten Commandments which were placed inside. But in 587 BC, when the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem and Solomon's temple, there's no record of what became of the Ark of the Covenant. Has the Ark survived to this day? And I think it's possible if it was being looked after, if it was being left in, buried underground, perhaps under Jerusalem in one of the flooded tunnels, well, I think it's very unlikely. The, the wood would have rotted away. The gold might still be there to be collected. There might still be the angels. 
Perhaps the stones inside it might still be there. Gold is really resilient. Now, there's no reason why that couldn't have survived to this day. Granted, the wood would have been a bit, you know, 3,000 year old wood is going to erode, but there's still a strong possibility. And look what you see in the Cairo Museum with all these wood chests coated in gold. It's the same sort of thing. And they look damn good today. I think the Ark of the Covenant really existed as a real historical item. We definitely see examples of this from ancient Egypt, of boxes that exactly fit the description that we see described in the Bible. The actual Ark of the Covenant could possibly have survived, partly because it's the whole thing is covered in gold. Um, and if you want to preserve something, the best way to do it, cover it in gold. The gold will not degrade in any way. So if anything's going to survive from biblical times, it's going to be the Ark of the Covenant. It's one of the greatest mysteries of all time, the final resting place of the Ark of the Covenant. But where is it? Well, perhaps one of the strongest claims is that two and a half thousand years ago, it was brought to this country, Ethiopia, and that it remains here today. It's supposed to be everywhere. It's supposed to be in Roslyn Chapel. It's supposed to be at Rennes le Chateau. Um, it was in Egypt. All these famous places. And yet the amazing thing is that, that there's every possibility that it could, could be in little old Ethiopia. Some historians claim that Babylon was in fact Abyssinia, the kingdom of the Queen of Sheba, today's Ethiopia, and that when they sacked Jerusalem, they brought the Ark of the Covenant there. For centuries, Ethiopian Christians have claimed that the Ark does rest in a small chapel in the northern town of Aksum. They say it was brought there thousands of years ago and has been guarded by a succession of monks who, once anointed, are forbidden to set foot outside the chapel grounds until they die. Now, according to the ancient Ethiopian text, the Kebra Nagas, the Queen of Sheba had a son with King Solomon. That son was called Menelik. Now, when Menelik was old enough, he went to Jerusalem to visit his father. And according to the Kebra Nagast, whilst he was there, he swapped the original Ark of the Covenant with a replica and brought the original here to Ethiopia. Now, it sounds like the script from a Hollywood movie, but is it true? Well, the, the outline of the story of Queen Makeda, the Queen of Sheba, who visited Solomon, um, that they were romantically involved, as a result of which Makeda found herself pregnant. The son that she bore when she had returned to Ethiopia was named Menelik, which means the son of the wise man. And that he, when he grew up, went to Jerusalem at his father's invitation and was given a replica of the Ark to take home with him. However, on the way back, he discovered from one of his companions that the replica had been left in Jerusalem and that what they were carrying to Ethiopia was the real Ark of the Covenant from Solomon's temple. When the Babylonians were sacking Jerusalem, and of course they destroyed Solomon's temple, I think if it was there in the first place that Menelik could well have taken it, rescued it, and taken it first to Egypt and then to Ethiopia. I went to meet Ethiopian historian Daniel Kibret, who's an expert on the Ark's history. 
we met in a cafe in the capital, Addis Ababa. So, do you believe the Ark of the Covenant is here in Ethiopia? So, I believe that it's in Ethiopia, basically because of uh, a historical document that was written in the 13th century. And that was uh, a book called in Ethiopic, the Kebranagast, the Glory of Kings. So, that book says that the Ark of the Covenant was removed from Jerusalem by the son of uh, uh, King Solomon, who later became an Ethiopian king. And, and then uh, he brought the Ark to Ethiopia, and first he uh, placed it in uh, the Lake Tana area, in one of the islands. Then eventually it was taken to Aksum. But as far as I'm aware, there are replicas of the Ark of the Covenant in all uh, Ethiopian churches, right? Yeah, there are replicas, but what kind of replicas? They are not replicas in shape, size and material. Uh, they are replicas symbolically. So uh, in form they differ because the Ark that is found in one church differs in size, in shape, in material uh, from another church. But uh, the arcs that are found in uh, several churches, they are believed to perform the same kind of you know, activity, miracle, whatever, that the original Ark of the Covenant performs. OK, so, so these replicas of the Ark, they're absolutely vitally important. They are as important Christians. as the actual uh, Ark of the Covenant for the Ethiopian Christians. So there's a very strong belief in the Ark of the Covenant with Christians here. Definitely. All Christians, you know, since time immemorial, you know, uh, believe the Ark of the Covenant is kept in Aksum. Uh, but nobody has seen it, you know. Uh, but the, even in the absence of a person who has seen it, a, a person who has observed it, people believe in it strongly. Every Ethiopian church possesses one or more symbolic replicas of the Ark of the Covenant. They're called tabots, and they're paraded on the heads of the priests on special holy days. In fact, they're just ancient wooden boxes which contain replicas of the Ten Commandments in stone. British writer Graham Hancock suggests that the Ark spent several years in Egypt before being brought down the Nile to Ethiopia, where it arrived here on this island in Lake Tana. Now, it spent several hundred years here before finally being moved to Aksum. Life on Tana Kirkos hasn't changed much for centuries. There are a number of priests, holy men and other religious figures on the island about 30 men in total, and they live completely cut off from modern society. No electricity, no phones, and very little contact with the outside world. But when I explained my quest to them, they gave me permission to visit. The high priest, known as Gabriel, agreed to show me around. There are a number of houses and other buildings dotted around the small island, as well as the main church, which is said to date back several centuries. Hello. And so is the church through here? The church is uh, five minutes. Right, OK. Yeah, go. And that is Monk House. And this is where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, right? Yeah. At Patronant, before Jesus Christ uh, lived in this highland, 800, above 800 years. For 800 years? Yeah, yeah. It was here? Yeah. Wow. So there were sacrifices yeah. here on this island? Yeah, yeah. What kind of sacrifices? Uh, sacrifice, sheep and goats. Sheep and goat sacrifices? Yeah. 
shift in, go to second phase. Okay, so this is a very holy place here. A holy of holy. Holy of holy, yeah. the holiest of holy. Yeah, yes. Really? Yeah. And how long has there been a monastery here? Uh, this uh, monastery in Ethiopia, oldest monastery. The oldest? Yeah, oldest, oldest. monastery. Because this monastery, uh, before Jesus Christ, 800, up to 800 years. Uh, in Ethiopia, uh, beer. Uh, uh, beer? Yeah, yeah. To drink? Yeah. Oh, so do you make beer here? Okay. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Do you? <laughs> What's your beer like? Yeah, in, in Amharic, Jesho. Is it nice? Yeah, yeah. It's very good. Beer in it. <laughs> in alcoholic. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, you must have some fun times here. Uh, okay. This way? This way. Okay. The priest agreed to show me the exact spot where the ark was placed and sacrifices were made to it thousands of years ago. Okay, uh, uh, mister, this uh, place, uh, before Jesus Christ, Ark of a Covenant by Jewish peoples uh, from uh, Jerusalem, Israel, uh, came from this highland and live uh, and put in this area, yeah. uh, Ark of a Covenant. This was, this was where the Ark of the Covenant was kept? Yes. And right here? Yeah, like this here. One, uh, three, four, Oh, if I, so they can, long. Yes. So they attached it? Yes, it was yes. This one, this one. Yes. So the Ark of the Covenant sat here. Yes. And it was a box, what, like this big? Yeah. How high? Yeah, big. Uh, it's a fetus, and this one, big. And his feet sat in these grooves? Uh, yeah, this one, this end, this a feet, a uh, legs of box. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's amazing. Uh, yeah, and sacrifice in this. Uh, in here? Yeah. Can yes. Have a look? Yeah. So they, well, the Ark of the Covenant was here. Yes. And then they sacrificed Sacrifice animals. This one. This one, blood sac sacrifice. And this is stone. Okay. The priest showed me where on the stones the sheep and goats were ritually sacrificed thousands of years ago in front of the ark. I've read the books, I've seen the films, but it's pretty amazing to think that I'm standing here where the Ark of the Covenant once was. It's an amazing position with the lake and in front of one of the oldest churches in Africa. It is a fascinating story. But is it true? According to the Bible, the Ark could be a powerful weapon. When it was carried into the River Jordan, it said that the waters parted. And when the Ark was paraded around the walls of the city of Jericho, they were shaken to the ground. If we follow the history of the Ark into battle situations or an inadvertent touching of it when it was being carried across the river by a man who meant no harm but was struck dead, I think that some of the descriptions might lead us to believe that there were plates of metal rather like a very high-powered battery. So perhaps if the Ark was technology rather than magic, but technology from the Lord alone knows where, then it might have been able to give out electric shocks. I could imagine if you were carrying an Ark out in the sunlight, bright sunlight, you know, in the Middle East, you're going to get a high charge on that, that Ark. And if someone comes out who's, who's earthed and touches it, he's going to get one hell of an electric shock, which could kill him, could possibly stop his heart. So there could be some truth in that story.
The priest said that they still had relics from the time that the Ark was here on the island, which he said had been left by the high priests when it was taken up to Axum over 2,000 years ago. Today, they're locked away in a heavily padlocked storeroom. So these items in here came with the Ark? Yeah. Over yeah. 2,000 years ago? Yes, yes. But uh, you should be this. There appears to be archaeological evidence to support the oral tradition that the Ark of the Covenant went to Ethiopia, to the island at Tana Kirkos. But in recent times, the priests have, have, have shown that they have a breastplate that they claim came with the Ark of the Covenant. So they have Jewish artifacts and relics, which, if nothing else, indicate that Relics from antiquity from the Jewish community made their way to this remote island in Ethiopia. Uh, this one is the first priest sacrifice, like built, like built. This one in the shoulder. This one in this uh, one. Ah, yeah, yeah. So this yeah. is like a like a breastplate. Yes, yeah, So the priest would have worn worn this during the during the ceremonies. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And this came with the Ark of the Covenant, same yes, time? Yes, yes. So this is how old? Uh, before Jesus Christ, uh, eight, above 800 years. 800 years BC? BC, yes. Wow, OK. <laughs> it's very old. And this one uh, plants the blood sacrifice. So this dish would have been used during the during the ceremony? Yeah, yeah. So this collected blood? Yeah, blood sacrifice. Blood in here? Blood in here, blood in Ark of the Covenant, and in it end. Right, and this is made of, is it iron? A brass. Bro bronze? Yes. Bronze. This, this actual bowl came with the Ark of the Covenant from Jerusalem to Ethiopia. Tanakirkos, Ethiopia, yeah. Tanakirkos yeah. Monastery by sac sacrifice, is blood sacrifice. So when the Ark left here for Axum, why were these items left behind? Uh, there uh, without, without not uh, uh, sacrifice in Christianity. Oh, OK. So no sacrifices, because Christianity had already yes. uh, started. So this is why they weren't needed. Yeah. Now, part of the story coming from Tanakirkos is that the Ark was brought there from Elephantine and it rested there for centuries before being taken on to Axum. Now, the fact that the other relics are still there, it's rather as if an important visitor had come, had taken off his hat and coat and had then gone away again, leaving the hat and coat behind. So is this the same age as the Ark of the Covenant? Yes. Same time? Yeah. And it came with the Ark here to the island? Yes. That's incredible. Wow. I thought he'd finished showing me the relics when he disappeared into the back of the hut and started rummaging around. And what he produced was truly unexpected. But I think times. Wow. So th <laughs> this is like a well, like a trumpet. Yeah. A trumpet. Trumpet. Yeah. And the priest would have, the priest would have yeah, blown these. The first priest. <laughs> now I've seen depictions of these. The priests yes. would have blown these uh, when the ark yeah. when the ark arrived. Yeah. That is extraordinary. And so this would have come with the Ark of the Covenant from, Jer from Jerusalem. Yeah. So this is proper Jewish history right here. Yes. Can I try? You can. That's not bad. It's good, huh? Yeah. Better than you. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> they also had these ancient trumpets um, and the trumpets that were used, of course, to, to bring down the walls of Jericho. So they have the sort of artifacts that you would expect to come along from Solomon's temple into Egypt and back into Ethiopia. So it's quite curious indeed. And when you're in their presence, it is rather convincing. Well, I wasn't quite sure what to expect coming here, but um, talking to the priest, who's absolutely passionate about it, and seeing the sacrificial stones and the relics here, and the, and the place in the rock where the Ark of the Covenant was kept, it's not evident, obviously, but it's a fantastic story. The next morning, I set off for Axum in Ethiopia's northern highlands. 2,000 years ago, this journey would have taken months going up the Nile. Today, it's just a 45-minute flight. Ethiopian Christians claim that the Ark of the Covenant, or the Tabot, as they call it, rests in this church of Our Lady Mary of Zion here in the small town of Axum. Now, they claim that the Ark arrived here nearly 3,000 years ago and is now guarded by a succession of priests who, once sworn in, are forbidden to ever leave this compound. It really is a fantastic story, but is it true? I think that there's every possibility that although this Ark of the Covenant is, is, is certainly well over 3,000 years old, um, the fact that it was made of rather hard wood, uh, gold and all manner of other things, it could have survived. It certainly wouldn't have rotted away. Gold wouldn't. The Ethiopians claim that they have the real Ark is interesting. I mean, basically, they take it to Axum in the Northern Highlands and build a special purpose church for it. It's a nice story. There's some archeology span that might support it, but will we ever know? No one's allowed to see it. If it is in Ethiopia, then it's in a church in Axum, and it is guarded by a guardian monk. One monk that, that stays there for life. He um, is not allowed out of the place. He is not allowed to see it himself. He, he prays to it. He is fed in the building, and he is the sole, the sole guardian of that, that amazing relic. The chief high priest in Axum agreed to meet with me and tell me why they believe that the real, original Ark of the Covenant was here in this sanctuary. Kerakulu is at 
تعلق قرص نات هو تمنات يا هرب صادر نرى بلن نرى لن لا تلس مسكنا كان من الذين يما الليات بل يجيبوا تاتكم تاندم تاتي زي كهالاتي نيا لتشو بل يجيبوا تا سو ما يدرس بيت مالت تاند كدوسو يتمرد سو عات عن كلامنا متقد إن ده زيهون ده لاون إن ده تقبل سو ما يجبابات تكهرات نرى لتشي You have to wonder if the Ark is truly an axiom because when you look at it, what are they guarding? They're guarding a tradition. They're guarding national pride. If they were guarding the greatest relic on earth, don't you think they'd have more than one bloke standing there looking proud? I mean, I could storm the Church of Zion and take the Ark of the Covenant. I'm sure of it. So it's not well protected. Westminster Abbey, that's protected. Church of Zion and axiom, I think it's they're celebrating a tradition. I don't really think they believe they have the Ark. In Ethiopia, uh, we are told that, um, that, the, that the Ark now resides in the church of Our Mary of Zion in Axum, and that the guardian who never leaves the church, he, there he is in front of the church, in front of the Holy of Holies, guarding this and nobody else is allowed to see it. Now, maybe nobody else is allowed to see it because it's simply too holy and nobody else is worthy apart from the Guardian. Or maybe nobody else is allowed to see it because it doesn't exist. Maybe they actually had a replica of the Ark. And maybe they kept replica tablets of stone in it. And I can imagine that when the Jews have become, you know, there's some kind of persecution going on, which happens periodically, you know, in Egypt. They could easily decide they've got to go south, head down, you know, through Sudan and end up in Ethiopia, bringing their ark with them. I personally think it's very doubtful that that is the same ark that Moses had made, you know, more than a thousand years earlier and put his stones in. Um, that then they should be brought down all the way down to Ethiopia. I think that's very unlikely. Not impossible, but very unlikely. But I do think they may well have a relic that is old and that looks like an ark and has stones in it with the laws written on them. But I think it's a replica. We have the ark housed in this treasury building in this remote area. And, you know, people that have gone and visited have said, you know, it's not particularly extraordinary. If we had an extraordinary box um, kept in the middle of nowhere, wouldn't it be in a, in a more secure or, or aggrandized place instead of, the, of just, you know, guarded by monks in the middle of nowhere? So really, I find it not very plausible. Um, perhaps it was a copy. Perhaps it, they, what they have is an actual artifact that's a copy of the original Ark of the Covenant. But the likelihood that it's the original Ark, I really find problematic. It is still the most uh, holiest and respected object as it is. It is the most precious object in history. It's something that has been used by God for the communication of the people, between his people and himself. The manifestation of God always occurred around the ark. On the 25th of June, 2009, the patriarch of the Orthodox Christian Church here in Ethiopia, Abune Paulos, announced that he was to reveal the Ark of the Covenant to the outside world. However, it seems the next day he had changed his mind and said he wasn't going to show it, but confirmed that it was to be kept safe and secure here in Axum. The strength of it being in the church in, in, in Axum is, is so strong because every church in Ethiopia has what's called a tabat, which is actually a replica of the Ark of the Covenant, or at least the, the, the slabs the Ten Commandments were written on, in, in every... They believe it to such an extent that they parade them through the streets for every religious festival that they have. Faith is an amazing thing. 
The Axum story is the most probable, and I would not be in the least surprised if at some future date, uh, those with the expert scientific knowledge to say yay or nay would find that the Ark in Axum is the one from Solomon's Temple. In order to uncover the real truth behind the mystery of the Ethiopian Ark, I tracked down one of the priests in Axum, Michael Kabede, to ask him a few questions. Michael, I've spent a long time trying to find the Ark of the Covenant. Yeah. Tell me, where is the Ark? The Ark of the Covenant is in here, in the blue window. Right here? Yes, right here. And have you seen it? No. No, only one monk. OK. Is, you know, to see the Ark of the Covenant. So only one man is one. allowed to see it? Yes. Can I see it? No. The fact that in Ethiopia they have probably one of the most famous relics on the planet. Uh, you go to Lincoln Cathedral or you go to Westminster Abbey and you are surrounded by officials, by, by guides, by volunteers. You're not allowed to stand there, you mustn't touch that. You mustn't... And yet, there in Ethiopia, there is one guy who probably is very old by now, all alone, guarding the most sacred relic on the planet. Do you really think so? I'm not so sure. It's a bit like the Grail Keeper in British mythology. There's one guardian of the Grail, and when he dies, another one takes his place. And as long as he's the guardian, he's not allowed out of the precincts of that church for the rest of his life. It does seem the way that it's apparently just stood there rather like a, a wheelbarrow in a garden shed rather than having any great air of sanctity about it or a great cordon of guardsmen surrounding it or a, a you know a cordon of priests around it we have this one lonely monk who might just as well be guarding a box of spring bulbs in 2009, the Patriarch said he was going to reveal the Ark of the Covenant to the world. Is that true? No. No? No. You know, at that time, of course, in 2009, in a meeting in uh, the Holiness Paul in Italy, mm -hmm. the Italian journalist, you know, translated from English to Italy. Oh, so it was mistranslation? Yes, mistranslation. Oh, so he... The Ark of the Covenant, you know, never... In was the never going to be shown? Yes. OK. The translation misses. But if it's just there behind that curtain... Yes. ..we could prove now, beyond all doubt, that it is definitely in there. Yes. If we just had a little look... No. You could just maybe show no, me no, a little... No, 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 no. I told you at the beginning, nobody is not allowed to the Ark of the Covenant. Okay. I will be asking one question for you, Jen. Have you seen the sun? Have I seen the sun? Yes. Yes. No. 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 To see the sun is, you know, too difficult <laughs> because your eye oh, is, you I know, see. blind. <laughs> I see. So seven times the power of the sun. Seven times. Yeah. Oh, the Ark of the Covenant yes. is seven times seven more powerful time. than the sun. Yes. Seven times more powerful than the sun. The biggest problem with the Ethiopian claim is that nobody has seen the Ark. They say they've got it, so where is it? They haven't even shown photographs of it. They haven't shown their grand people. They haven't shown Haile Selassie or Mussolini. Um, basically, they stand in front of it and say, you can't come and look at it. It leads one to suspect that actually it does not exist. Although the Ethiopian Orthodox Church has so far refused to show it to anyone, they say that the story about the Ark coming to their country is fact, and that this little church in Axum does house the holiest of holy relics, which Menelik stole from Jerusalem. Admitting it actually wasn't there would undermine over 2,000 years of history. Do you think that whatever he brought back is here today? I believe whatever is brought here, not only the Ark of the Covenant, everything is kept secret. You know? What makes the Ethiopian church unique is that everything is always kept a secret from the followers, the Christians, even from the priests too. So it might be here, not necessarily in Aksu. 
There are so many uh, different theories about the last resting place of the Ark, whether it went to Babylon, whether Titus took it to Rome, um, whoever conquered Jerusalem was credited with having taken it. But of all the possibilities, the one that I find most probable is that it rests in Axum. The, the, the big question is, is the Ark still in Ethiopia? Or has it gone? Um, there are two theories. Number one, uh, the Knights Templar, of course, in, in the uh, 13th century, they definitely went to Ethiopia. There are definitely crosses, uh, Templar crosses, on some of the churches. And there is a possibility they were certainly looking for something, and they may well have taken it with them, and it may be in Scotland. The other possibility is in the 1970s, the Israelis were actually um, airlifting uh, a lot of the black Jews, Falashas, um, taking them out of the country, and they may well have taken something else with them. As long as it's a mystery, as long as nobody's actually touching it, looking at it, measuring it, carbon dating it, doing all the things that would be done by archaeologists if they actually had the Ark in their possession, then the mystery lives on. The truth is, it's too late for the Ethiopian church to retract and say, actually, it's not here. It's part of their annual procession. It's embedded in their national pride. That's what they're celebrating, the tradition that it once could have been there. It's too late for them to pony up and say, actually, no, it's no longer here. We really have four possibilities of where the Ark of the Covenant could be today. The first possibility would be that the Babylonians sacked Jerusalem and took it. The second possibility would be that the Romans took it when they sacked Jerusalem. The third possibility is that the Ark of the Covenant is still under Jerusalem, lost under the rubble and bits underneath the, the structures of the tunnels. And the fourth possibility would be that it's in Ethiopia. If only we could get permission for scientists with modern equipment, carbon dating items, etc., to look at the object in Axum, I think we would be able to verify at least the age and the constituents of that mysterious box. So, is the Ark of the Covenant really here in the highlands of Ethiopia? Well, the religious authorities absolutely claim that it is, but I guess that depends on what Menelik really brought back from Jerusalem. Was it the Ark, or was it a copy, or some other religious icon? Whatever the real story is, the fact remains that to over 50 million Ethiopian Christians, it's the absolute cornerstone of their belief. And who's to judge that? I'll see you next time.